Hello and welcome back to Farawa. In this video, I will be showing you some nature crafts that could be goblin core or gremlin core. These are mostly made of things you can find outside and in your house. First is a stick box. Get your shoes on, get your clippers, and locate some good sticks. I'm using some thin pine sticks from when we did some tree work. I would recommend trying to find the straightest ones you can. I don't know how many I got, maybe 20 or so, about foot long sticks or something like that. Depending on the measurements you want for your box, arrange them in the same length for the base, for the top, and the length you want for the sides. After arranging them all to how I wanted them to look, I hot glued the base together, and then the top, and then the sides. For the lid, you could either make a hinge out of string, or a twist tie like I did, or glue sticks just inside the perimeter of the lid so it can go off and on like a normal box without hinges. I started making some glue globs for mushroom stems, but it's easier just to make a line on wax paper and peel it off. Then I made the tops by making a hot glue droplet on the wax paper or plastic and peeling it off. For this part, I switched from a high temp to a medium temp hot glue gun so it dried faster and did not stick to the surface as much. I painted over the hot glue with a blend of green and red and blue acrylic to get a forest brown and green, and then painted the stems and mushroom tops. Lastly, I added some moss that my brother likes to collect for me on the ground. I just sort of hot glued it randomly, or over any piece of hot glue I missed painting. I really like how it turned out. The hinge is a little too big, so I think I'll change it. If the things you are putting in the box fall through, you can cut a felt or paper or whatever material insert to put in the bottom. Next up, we're starting an avocado plant. Take an avocado pit out of an avocado, stick toothpicks in it, right side up, and set it in water so it is about half submerged. Soon it will grow roots and you can put it in soil. I have been growing mine for about two years now and I am so proud of its progress. Next up is a citrus garland. I have another video just on drying the fruit, but basically I sliced it and either put it in the sun for a few days or put it in the oven on low. These had been hanging in the kitchen by clothes pins since last winter and it was time to move them. Just take some string and you can use an embroidery needle if you want to help get it through the citrus. You can tie a knot or sort of loop it through itself like I did to make a knot slide down the string. I hung this over my window where I already have some orange slices and they catch the light very nicely. For the last craft, I am painting some rocks. I have a rock collection of all the pretty or smooth or interesting rocks I find around. These aren't all of them though, I don't know where the rest went. I chose a few and started each one with a white base so the top colors will stand out more. This one kind of looked like a frog to me, so I started layering some green and red until I got the color I wanted. Once 
While that was drying, I moved on to the next rock. I didn't really know what I was doing at first, so the green half doesn't matter. I made a blue sky with ombre black at the top. I also made a mountain range, and then I made a blue ocean with ombre blue and black as well. Then the moon and the stars. Next, I added some pale white wherever I thought the moon might reflect on the mountains and the water. For the next rock, I thought it looked kind of like a skull. I added the eyes in black acrylic and started to do the nose, but I realized that I messed up, so I put white on top of it, but that smeared into gray, except that was a good thing because I used that for shading. Then I finished the mouth. I think I accidentally combined a deer skull and some sort of wild cat skull, but this is made up, so it doesn't matter. I finished the details with some creases and lines before continuing with the frog. I added the eye and some line work for legs and limbs. I know it's not truly accurate, but I think it's alright. For this one, I didn't really know what to do here, so I just started with a black outline. Then I made some speckles and black dots for eyes and the beak. And then I added wings and more dots and feathers and here's a little snowy owl. <laughs> then you can also paint a plant marker. This one is for yarrow so I painted some simple yarrow and painted the label. For the skull, I hot glued on some twigs I found as antlers. I think these are very cool and would look nice in a garden or as a gift. Here are some others that I made for relatives I visited recently. I didn't spray these to make them waterproof because I'm keeping them inside for now, but if you want them to be water resistant, there is a type of spray you can buy at the hardware store to coat them. Also, whenever you find a rock at the beach that looks not really nice when it's wet, but kind of dull when it's dry, you can just paint them with top coat of nail polish and then it'll be shiny and a clear coat. So those are all the crafts in this video. I really hope you liked it and got inspired. Here are some beautiful butterfly wings I found outside. No butterfly, just the wings. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you in the next video, and goodbye for now from Firewa.